Yes, folks, we're gonna make this real clear. Everyone comes from Adam and Eve. Now, that's a well-known fact in the Christian religion and maybe even amongst other religions. But we're here to prove, according to the scripture, that everyone, including the Moabite, the Ammonites, the Ishmaelite, the Edomite, Canaanite, all the Hamites, the Japhites, and yes, the children of Israel all come from Adam. Let's get into it. Let me get the book of Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 53, read. The book of Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 53. Upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth that before thee it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. So we're talking about the creation and we're talking about the sixth day. Now, one day to the Lord is like a thousand years. So we're talking about the sixth day or the 6,000th year of creation, ladies and gentlemen. And that's when beasts, as well as cattle, creeping thing, and of course, human beings were all created. The book of Genesis chapter one, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So here on the sixth day, not the fifth day, not the fourth day, but on the sixth day, God said, let us make man in our image. Well, what image is that? The image of God, Hamasha, the angel. And what does that exactly mean to make, let's make man in our image? The most high God has two arms, two legs, a head, a torso, a pelvis, one nose, two eyes, two ears, one mouth. The Lord wasn't going to make us look like an octopus. He wasn't going to make us look like a platypus. We wasn't going to look like some strange being. We were going to look like the exact image. So if anyone has any strange ideas of what you think the Most High God looks like, I want you to think again because we're made in his image. So don't think so much of yourselves to all of you other nations of people. We're, but we'll get into you guys later. Let's get into the book of the generation of Adam. Let me get the book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. Read the book of Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that Yahweh created man and the likeness of Yahweh made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Let's pay attention here where it says in the likeness of God made he him male and female created he them. But we're going to actually break this down. Now, yes, we've heard Israelites say that all these different nations were all created all on the sixth day. We got to really kind of investigate that a little bit. Let's get the book of Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 54. Read. The book of Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Wait a minute. Now, there's a belief that the Lord created a whole bunch of different people all at the same time on the sixth day. You even have some camps out there teaching that human beings came out of the water. That's that's what they believe, that humans came out of the water. That sounds like some evolution stuff to me. We just read right here in the scripture, of him come we all. That, this is what the Lord said. He said, of him. Who's the him? Adam! So of Adam come we all, right? And the peace and the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people. What people did the Lord choose? Well, we'll have to answer that. But right here it says, of him come we all. As a matter of fact, let's get some precepts over here. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 said, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. It said Adam was first formed. It, it didn't say Adam and then a whole bunch of other people. There's a belief that Adam and Eve have parents. Well, 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 where's the parents at in the scripture? Where are they at? Because right here it said Adam was first formed and then Eve. But was Eve immediately formed? No, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, on the sixth day, one day to the Lord is as a thousand years. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So you guys think all this stuff happened in the blink of an eye. This stuff didn't happen in the blink of an eye. Eventually, Eve came along within that 6,000, within that 1,000 years, which was the sixth, the sixth day. Remember, one day to the Lord is a 1,000 years. So everything didn't happen immediately. I mean, Adam had time to, to name all the animals 
before Eve even came onto the scene. Let's go back to 2nd Edges chapter 6, verse 54, and it says, watch well, this, look at the bottom. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Well, who are these people that thou hast chosen? Well, we know them to be the Israelites. Well, how do we know that there's a difference? Because you have many of the other nations who say, no, it's us that's chosen because we believe on Jesus. So we're, we're chosen. Anyone who believes on Jesus, what well, they're chosen. Well, let's go ahead and break this down to you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get some genealogy checks going on. Let me get the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 34. Read the book of Luke chapter 3 and verse 34, which was the son of Jacob. Stop. If you're not a descendant of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, you're not the chosen. We can stop right there. Let me say it again. If you're not from this man called Jacob. Now, let me be clear. Edomites are not from Jacob. Moabites, Ammonites, Ishmaelites, Hamites, Japhites, you guys are not from Jacob at all. The only ones that are from Jacob are his 12 sons and his one daughter, died, and that's it. Nobody else came from Jacob, nobody. So if you're not from the 12 tribes of Israel, because Dinah doesn't have her own tribe, so she doesn't count. If you don't come from the 12 tribes of Israel, guess what? You're not the chosen. But. We'll continue with the genealogy. Three, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Thar, which was the son of Nacor, which was the son of Saru, which was the son of Ragu, which was the son of Philek, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arpaxad, which, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of No, Noah, which was the son of Lamet, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malilil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So we just read the genealogy, ladies and gentlemen, and it went starting from Jacob going all the way to who? Adam, who is the son of God. But let's be clear, folks. If you don't come from Jacob, you're not one of the chosen. Now, is it true that Adam had other children? Yes, Adam had a whole boatload of children. Adam and Eve in the garden, they had a lot of sex and they had a lot of children, and those children didn't mean anything. Let me get the book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6, read. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Thou madest Adam, and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper, and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, It is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. So Adam was on the earth for a while before the Lord decided to make a woman for him. But I want you to notice, look, of them came mankind. So from Adam and Eve came mankind. I don't understand why, where this perception that Adam had parents. Adam was made from the dust of the ground by the Lord who breathed life into him. So this idea about him having a parent doesn't make sense because the scripture right here says, watch this, of them came mankind. This is what you call plain upon tape. The book of Genesis chapter three, verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the, watch this everybody, mother of all living. That's what you would call plain upon table. She's the mother of all living. Anybody that came into being into the earth came out of this woman's womb. Let me get the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 read the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul so right here like as i said a minute ago the lord formed man out of the dust of the ground the lord is the potter we're the clay read and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof so where's this notion that there were other women that were on the earth. The woman comes out of man. That's why she is woe man. She is of man. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So the Lord made the woman out of the rib and said, here you go, Adam. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. A woman is she is the image of the man, ladies and gentlemen. And I know a lot of you demonic, Diana-worshipping women, y'all hate that. And it's too bad that you hate that because because of that hatred, a lot of you guys are going to perish here in Babylon the Great. Let me get the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, read. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the Lord chose the children of Israel before what? The foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, he said, you, 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 you not you, not none of y'all, 
you, not none of y'all, you, 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 not you guys, you and you. That's what he did. And I know it burns you up. But what about all the other people who aren't Israelites? Because there's no such thing as spiritual Israel. So what about the other people that are, they're not Israelites. What about us Gentiles? Because don't y'all proudly call yourselves Gentiles? What about the other people? Aren't they important too? Let's find out if the other people and who are the other people? The Gentiles. Let me get the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 56. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 56. As for the other people, which also came with Adam. So everyone comes from Adam. Read. Thou hast said that they are nothing. The Lord said that they are nothing. But who's the they? Who are they? Let's, let's get an example of the other people that the Lord says are nothing. The book of 1 Ezra chapter 8 verse 69 the nation of israel the princes the priests and levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land nor the pollutions of the gentiles to wit so this is talking about the non-israelites the the people that the lord said were nothing hey let's list them of the canaanites they're nothing hittites they're nothing jebusites they're nothing and the moabites they're nothing. Egyptians, they're nothing. And the Edomites, they're nothing. Let's look over here in 1 Kings 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, the women of, watch this, the Moabites. Uh, once again, they're nothing. The Ammonites, they're nothing. The Edomites, look, look, once again, they're nothing. You're double nothing. The Zidonians, you're nothing. The Hittites, you're nothing. You're double nothing too. Wait, it gets better. The book of Psalm chapter 83, we're talking about other nations that are not Israelites that are nothing. Well, let's talk about you. The book of Psalm chapter 83, verse six, the tabernacles of Edom. Wow, you're a triple nothing. And the Ishmaelites, you're nothing. Moabites, you're a triple nothing. Hagarines, you're nothing. Gabal, you're nothing. Ammon, you're a double nothing. Amalek, you're nothing. The Philistines, you're nothing. The inhabitants of Tyrese, you're nothing. And Ashur, you nothing. So we just read the list of people, all of y'all who come from Adam. Lord just said that you're nothing. But let's find out, since you're nothing, let's find out what the Lord thinks about you. The book of Second Edris, chapter 6, verse 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. Wait a minute. So you're nothing. But he said that you spit. Spit? Wait a minute, read. And hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. You don't give a damn about that drop. That's what the Lord feels about you. What's worse, that you're that drop that he don't care about or that you spit or that you're nothing? Wait, you're all three, read. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing. Wait, what's another word for heathen? Gentile. Another word for heathen is Gentile. And he said, and now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Read. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hand. We're the firstborn. We're his only begotten. But the Lord said that these people are nothing. Let me get the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 35. Read. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Now, what's interesting is you have a lot of Christians who'll say, no, he created everything and we're all children of God. Look at what the Lord said. He said, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Read. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou the lord looks at really in all honesty the lord looks at everybody down here on earth as nothing right but the fact is that the lord is flexing and the lord says who are all you guys down here on earth which one are y'all gonna oppose but he's counting you as nothing. You might all come from Adam. The Lord says that you're nothing. But what about you two-third wicked Israelites who say, I'm I'm some kind of I'm hope temp pan-African foundational black. Um, I'm a Christian. I ain't no Israelite. 
I'm gonna keep smoking weed and, and having sex and spreading disease. I'm gonna keep doing whatever the hell I wanna do, smoking and drinking, cause I'm young, that's what I'm supposed to do. Naturally, you're an Israelite by blood. Yes, if you're a black, Hispanic, and Native American, and I know that pisses a lot, especially you Gen X, you male Gen X, for some reason that pisses you off. Book of Romans chapter nine, verse six. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect because the word of God has taken effect. Didn't the Lord said, if you don't obey my law, statutes, commandments, I'm gonna put these curses on you? Yes. Didn't he say that you were gonna be cursed in the city and in the field? Yes. Didn't that happen to us? Yes. Did we get our children taken away from us and sold into slavery? Yes. Weren't we put into those slave ships and sent over here? Yes. Are we a laughing stock? Are we a gazing stock? Are we filth on the earth? Doesn't the scripture say that we're filth on the earth? We're a joke. Slaves. Everything the Lord said would happen, happened. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. What does that mean? Just because you're a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, yeah, yeah, that's right. Naturally, you're an Israelite. But you're not Israel if you're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And just because you're black, Hispanic, and Native American don't mean that you're necessarily chosen. Two-thirds of y'all got to die. You're a nothing. Right here it says, just because you Israel don't mean you Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So just because, yeah, you might be the sperma of Abraham, but you ain't, you're not the children of the kingdom. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, when you look at Abraham, Abraham had who? Abraham had Ishmael. He's the father of all the Arabs, the Ishmaelites. But they're not the children of the promise. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. And that also includes you Edomites. Because remember, Isaac had two children, Jacob and Esau. Esau, I'm sorry, you ain't picked. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And who are the children of the promise? Are the Israelites. But we read in the book of Ezra that the Lord called Israel his firstborn. Now you might be thinking, well, I thought that was Jesus. No, no, no. Let me get the book of Exodus chapter four, verse 22, read. The book of Exodus chapter four, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So the Lord is calling Israel his firstborn. He picked Israel in the womb, ladies and gentlemen. Book of Hosea chapter 11, verse one. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. The Lord loved Israel. He picked us above and beyond anybody. Remember the, the scripture said, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Okay, well, let's find out who those promises are for. Let me get, let me get the book of Romans chapter nine, verse four, read. The book of Romans chapter nine, and verse four. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the services of Yahweh, and the promises? The adoption. Look, the northern tribe is going to be grafted back in to the southern tribe. So the northern tribe, they can be adopted back into the fold. The glory, which is what? The esteem and the honor is only given to the Israelites. The covenants. And there are a lot of covenants, by the way. We're going to focus on the old covenant, which is what? Blood sacrifice. The new covenant, which presently right now, we all have grace, but that new covenant is going to be when the laws are placed inside of our minds, ladies and gentlemen. So no one will ever commit any sin so we don't have to die. The giving of the law was only, the laws were only given to Jacob and the servants of God, the servants of the Most High God, are the Israelites. And the promises were all given to the Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Hey, so-called Blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you kings and you daughters of Sarah, you prince of the Lord and you princesses of God. Look at what the Lord called you. He said, ye shall be my sons and daughters. Don't worry about no titles, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord said that ye shall be my sons and daughters. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. I will be his father 
and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. This is talking about the Israelites. This is not talking about Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. It's talking about the Israelites because Yahweh would never commit iniquity, which is sin. Let me get the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 59. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, and verse 59. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So look at the question that's being asked. Remember, the world was made for our sakes. But the question is, if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess the inheritance with the world? Well, because a lot of prophecies have to take place, ladies and gentlemen. The children of Israel had to fall away. We had to go into slavery. All of us did. All 12 tribes. Number two, the son of perdition must be revealed. There's a lot of prophecies that haven't come true yet. They all must happen. We have to endure until the end, ladies and gentlemen, in order for us to receive our inheritance. But let's talk about that inheritance. Let's get some good news around here. Let me get the book of Second Edges, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. The book of Second Edges, chapter 7, verse 10. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decree that now is done. Let's really take a look at this. It says, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. So for the Israelites, this is proof positive right here that the entire world, we're talking about our inheritance. We're not just going to have just the land that the Lord promised to us. We're gonna have the whole earth. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse nine. For the Lord's portion is his people. Christians will always tell you, the Lord created everybody and everybody, he's the God of everybody. And right here it's saying, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. I love that term, apple of his eye. That means he loved him dearly. He's the one, the Lord's the one who taught Jacob the laws, statutes, and commandments. Now that we understand that the Lord, for one, all of you guys are nothing. Number two, the Lord has indignation specifically for Esau. But let's find out what's actually gonna happen to you because the good news, Hey, 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 to you heathen, y'all going to heaven. Oh, every one of you nations are all going to heaven. Oh, man, yay. You're going to make it, man. Hey, ain't that good news? Oh, man. Hey, even you guys who believe on Caesar Borgia, y'all call him white Jesus. Y'all making it to the kingdom. But let's find out what your positions are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you the good news and the great news for us. Let me get the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So the Lord is going to have mercy on the house of Israel. And set them in their own land. So they're going to be set in the land that was promised to them. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So we're talking about the Gentile. Those are the strangers, the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles, read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to cleave to us. Why? Because we got the law, statutes, commandments. They're going to want to learn from us, read. And the people shall take them. And the Israelites are going to take the heathens, read. And bring them to their place. So they, we're going to bring them to our land. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, her servants and handmaids. So we're going to possess you. Wait. This is you in the kingdom. You're not going to be floating on no clouds. You're not going to have little wings and be naked little white angels. You're not going to do none of that. It says that we're going to possess you. What happens when you possess something? Doesn't it seem like you own it? We're going to own you. Just like, just like you own a pair of shoes, we're going to own you. Just like you own a jackass, we're going to own you. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captive. So you're not gonna be free in, in the kingdom of heaven, read. Whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're going to own you, we're going to take you captive, and we're gonna rule over you. That's what's gonna happen in the kingdom of heaven. 
Now, of course, you know what they're going to say, but you know what the heathen is going to say. The heathen is going to say, oh, you're misinterpreting it. Well, this right here is pretty plain, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not an Israelite, if you're not a blood-born descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your ass is going into captivity. But let's find out exactly what the heck that meant. Let me get the book of 2 Andrews chapter 6, verse 9, read. The book of 2 Andrews chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. For Esau is the end of the world. That's what grabbing onto the heel means. For Esau is the end of the world. So this world that we're living in right now is Esau's world. That's how come, watch this, remember in the book of Job, it said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Well, guess what? This world is given into the hand of Esau, ladies and gentlemen. But watch this. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Hamashiach, the Lord's world, is on its way and it's coming real soon. Let me get the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 20. Read. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Wait a minute. Didn't we say that all life comes from Adam and Eve? Eve is the mother of all living. Her husband's name was Adam, so he was the one getting her pregnant. Read. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And right there proves that the Lord forgave Adam and Eve for their transgression. So today, we just found out that everyone comes from Adam and Eve. Yes, folks, everyone does come from Adam and Eve.